Good morning, everybody. Um, my name is Katrina Koshy Ferguson. I'm the I'm head of operations at um, the Venture Community Association, which comprises of the Community Centre, Nottingham Hill Adventure Playground, and um, Glissando Still Band. So I'm going to be talking about um, what we've done since the announcements were made. So we haven't closed as an organisation. We have kept going. Um, we kind of split our work into two main areas, play being the main focal point for children and young people, but then also our community response. So in terms of our community response, we used our building and premises to operate a, um, a food bank. So that was on a Wednesday and a Saturday. Um, we don't deal with forms and uh, referrals here. Anybody um, from any walk of life could just turn up and um, get some food. Um, it's quite popular. We, on the Wednesday, we have about between 40 and 50, and every Saturday we have up to 70 people. Um, we also thought about um, the government were asking children and young people to stay home, and we know that most of our families are either in overcrowded accommodation and are struggling financially. So we were like, okay, well, you're asking us to stay home, but how can we do that comfortably? So we came up with, um, a, few, a food and fuel voucher. So um, those that couldn't uh, get to us, but could get to a Sainsbury's or Tesco, they were given a voucher, or um, we also topped up gas and electric um, vouchers as well. It was a bit of a headache, but we got there in the end. Uh, we were inundated with um, fuel vouchers um, and applications, a lot more than we could accommodate, but we were able to give um, to 92 households in the borough, which was, which was really great. So um, the main um, thing that we did in terms of play was uh, we were told that we were unable to open our playgrounds like uh, most of you. Um, then I thought, okay, well, what can I do? Because we've got Easter holidays approaching. So I spoke to a, head, a local head teacher and was like, right, okay, we need to be able to offer families something for working parents who are out on the front line. What can we do? So we decided to um, operate at one of the schools but prior to that when Boris made the announcements that um, uh, private playgrounds and childcare providers could um, open we were like right okay let's open our adventure playground and let's just have like 20 children who um, either are vulnerable or critical that need our help and then we uh, contacted our council to let them know what we were planning to do and then we got a no um, from the council straight away without even asking what we were planning to do and then we got a no from public health with no reasoning either so um a couple of the head teachers got together and they were like do you know what this is not right what are our parents going to do um these play workers are here um let them use one of our schools so um a head teacher kindly gave us his secondary school to operate um after to and frame with the council and public health they actually agreed that it was the best thing for our play workers to go into schools and the good thing about what we did was um there was a lot of space. We had ample space for 25 children in a huge secondary school. So we operated in a time where um, there were no social bubbles. There was no, the social distancing was in, but we, there was no legislation or anything to sort of advise us to what we could do. So we had to do our own risk assessments and then get them verified from the council. But we were able to offer a service for 25 people, um, 25 um, children during the Easter holidays. And um, play was at the forefront. Um, I think a lot of people might have doubted us because they felt that we're just an adventure playground and we just open our doors and children just run around and they feel that it was, you know, we weren't able to adapt what we do and take it into another environment and still call it, you know, um, adventure play. And we were able to do that um, quite successfully. I mean, the children are very clued up as to what's going on. We implemented social distancing, but um, when, you, when you open your doors, you'll notice that children they're going to come together, they're going to play, they're going to enjoy themselves, but it's about just giving them that gentle reminder that, you know, um, we are basically in these times. And then they just kind of just got on with it and we had a lovely um, Easter. And then we operated at the same place during the Nixon holiday and um, we had 50 children um, in the end. And we also worked with, we ended up working for, for five, then to 11 schools, which included two secondary schools in the borough, um, the safeguarding team were also on board to offer us help and support and then we also got referrals uh, for looked after and vulnerable children so it was like a, it was a really big collective and we had um, by our inclusion team 
also sent down children with uh, one-to-one -one play workers. So it worked out um, really well. Our next steps in terms of uh, play-based activities during the summer is to operate at the school, but um, that's just to offer childcare and school-based play to um, families. We want to have our playground open. We're making the necessary steps to get our playground open. Um, at the moment, it's still an open the borough and just in terms of government guidelines and their understanding of what we can do on site. Even though they know that we do great things, it's just about, um, I suppose, reducing the anxiety or fear of children coming onto the playground, which we know isn't a bad thing. It's, it, it's, it's great for them. Um, one of our main worries is we feed our children um, during summer holiday. We get on average about 127 children for our door today. So we're saying, you know, if we're not open, what is the what, what are the alternatives? We can't just say, you know, the government have given a food voucher to um, all children who um, are entitled to free school meals. We know that there are a lot of families out there who who need us and who need play um, just as as a support network, really. And we want to be there. To, to help them. Um, so we've got a playground that's hopefully going to be opening. Um, we're usually open from 8 a.m. to 6 p.m. Um, and that's Monday to Friday, but we are looking at splitting our sessions into um, three hour sessions. We also will operate a play ranger program. So it used to operate uh, when I worked for um, the local authority and then they sort of scrapped that as they um, um, kind of got rid of the in-house play service, but we're looking to bring that back because we know that um, the government is saying that they want as much outdoor activity um, as possible, so we're able to accommodate that. So that's three um, opportunities for children and young people that we'll be offering in North Kensington. Wow, that just sounds amazing, Petrina, like you've really managed to push the boundaries as hard as you could and keep going all the way through. I think that's really good news and very heartening to hear about. Are you, are you, the way you're operating, is that with strict social bubbles going forward for your summer plans? I mean, are you looking at fixing the, the children, knowing who they are and then being the same children each day? The, uh, no, the only thing that we're asking um, our families to do is to book in the times um, so at the moment in our heads we're thinking of a 10.30 to 1 with a break in between for cleaning and staff breaks and then 3 to 6. But um, we, because I suppose because we've operated already, we are not necessarily following um, the social bubble unless we are directly told by the government that this is what we have to do to be open. Um, I think, yeah, we won't. We won't <laughs> I like that approach. And what about, I know earlier you said that you had um, spoken to the local authority about your plans and they said no. Um, will you be speaking to your local authority about these plans? We are, so we've already sent for our proposal with them. We've got a meeting with them on Thursday, but um, it's important for them to know that we are the play providers. They do not run our services. Um, they do give us, um, uh, some grants and core grant funding but we are the experts in what we do and um, as much as I want children to play I also want children to be safe so safety is uh, a key factor in this but at the end of the day we have we have we're the tried and tested method so we could tell you um, what we've done what we put in place and it really until you go into it and you see it is when you realize you know what um, it's going to be fine we're going to be fine so yeah, so if anybody has any additional questions, please remember that you can put them into the chat and um, I'll read them out. Um, so in terms of um, one of the other things that's come up with some of the other conversations we've had have been about staff anxiety around being in work, especially over the period of the lockdown. There's lots of worry from people around their own safety, I think, and the safety of their own families if they're coming into work with children. Have you come across any of that with your staff team? We've had quite the opposite. As soon as we got the go-ahead for the East provision, the staff were like, well, what day do you need me? I'm there. We, we put contingencies in place just in case staff, you know, um, at whatever point felt that they couldn't continue. But um, they were really enthusiastic and just wanted to get out there and, and just, just help children with their play, really. Okay. So we've got a question which I think is really great and relates to what I was thinking about around your cleaning regimes and your confidence that you're going to be all right and keep people safe. 
So somebody's asked whether you'd be willing to share some of your risk assessments. Yeah, sure. Be it does involve a lot of cleaning. And, <laughs> I um, can I imagine. Yeah, there was a lot. There was scheduled cleaning. There was just sporadic cleaning. Lots of antibac, lots of spray, lots of wipes. Um, children getting involved. Just, yeah, it, it's going to become second nature for just cleaning and wipe. Okay. So shall we... Um, we, if you give us the, some risk assessments, we can send them out and, and people can get back to us if they would like to ask questions after this. Is that a good plan? Yeah, sure. And then we've also got a question around staffing ratios. What, what, you know, what were you following with that? So during the Easter holiday, if I remember correctly, I think the ratio was one to five. Um, during Whitson holiday, it was one to eight. So the maximum we had was 50. Okay. And so people could book in and if it was full, it was full. That's how you ran that, those sessions. Yeah, so, I mean, the, the school-based play stuff, uh, the families were referred by head teachers. So they, the children were already in school receiving some sort of education because, and then we also had referrals from social care who were just worried about either looked after children or just children who were really vulnerable. So we were able to monitor it a lot better um, because it was orchestrated with the schools and safeguarding. Okay, all right. Um, there are some people, I think, who feel quite excited about the information you've been giving, uh, given, giving and worried that they might have missed it. But we, you must all know that we're recording this um, webinar, so we will be able to make it available to you in the future. So don't worry if you, if you missed some of what... Katrina's told us. Another question. Did you put extra hand washing facilities? We in? did, yeah. We, um, we scheduled in lots of hand washing. I tried not to um, adulterate their play as much as possible. It was hard sometimes because they were really engaging in stuff and we were like, right guys, you really need to go and wash hands. But then they kind of got into the routine of um, I'm going to play, oh let me wash my hands, I've been outside, I'm going to go wash my hands, it's lunch time. So they kind of adapted it themselves and then they, yeah, it, was all, it was all them, it wasn't us. Brilliant. Well Petrina, that has been really good and an excellent way to start this webinar, so thank you very much.